Hey, 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 it is uh, Genetics Day here at MSME, and we're going to go back in time to another basic topic here, nucleosides versus nucleotides. Uh, a lot of people use these terms interchangeably, incorrectly. They are not the same thing, and we'll talk about what the difference is and why the difference is something that we actually care about. Um, we have another video on purines versus pyrimidines, and that might be a good starter before we get to this point, because... That video explains these ends here in both these drawings. And those ends represent a nitrogenous base, which is a fancy way of saying that end thing there is explained in different videos. So check that out first. Uh, however, this is kind of the step up. And so really when we move from um, nitrogenous bases, and as we talk about purines or primidines, and we're getting to our end goal of deoxyribonucleic acid, or DNA, uh, we kind of have to take some steps along the way. And the first step that we take is the step that leads us to nucleosides. Now sides, S, when you see S, think of sugar. Sugar, this seems kind of like a random thing. But the reason why is because of this guy right here. This ring is actually a five-sided ring structure that we call ribose. And you know, think like ribose, ribonucleic acid, it's all kind of starting to sound familiar. This ribose sugar, this pentamer, this five-sided uh, ring structure here, has now been added to our nitrogenous base. And <clears throat> I know a lot of you are probably are looking ahead, and you'll notice there's some familiarity here with the ribose down here in nucleotide. So, you're right in assuming that nucleoside is that step after purine or primary, or after that nitrogenous base, we're now moving, we're adding this this uh, ribose structure here. And so basically a nucleoside, think S, sugar, we think of that because a nucleoside has to do with the addition of this ribose here. So we start with a purine or pyrimidine, we add the ribose, and now we have a nucleoside. Now what the heck is a nucleotide? A nucleotide is everything we just talked about, a nucleoside, so this would be like a second step afterwards, except it also has the addition of this, PO4, which is a phosphate group. Now, why is that important? I mean, you know, a phosphate group, where does that come into play? Who cares? Uh, a phosphate group is fantastic in bonding. And so when you have, and, and making a chain, so when you have nucleotides, we can actually start assembling a chain structure, a helix, if you will, uh, to make a chain of DNA or RNA. Because this phosphate group here, there'll be another one. Let's say we had another nucleotide down here. And up here on the top, we have another <clears throat> phosphate group just like that. That phosphate group will very easily bond to this hydroxyl, this OH group, will kick off this H. And now you can see if we have this bond and we have another one down here and we have another one down below, we're very quickly stacking up this chain of nucleotides. So that's why this important this phosphate is very, uh, very key. Um, <clears throat> the other thing I want to talk about quickly with this video are these red squares. Now, those red squares can be uh, can include one of two things. They can either include a hydroxyl group or just a proton, just an H. And now why is that important? You know, let's think of that what that DNA stands for. Everyone knows the DNA stands for deoxyribonucleic acid. Now deoxy, that first part, deoxy implies the removal of this uh, oxygen from this hydroxyl group. So down here we could call this nucleotide where I have just the proton, just the H. This would be deoxy, and this would be oxygenated, or just simple ribose. Um, that's important because in our bodies, that's the way that, that the chain can finally fit together, uh, <clears throat> like stereotypically, or fit together in space, is if we remove that hydroxyl group. Uh, and, and that's kind of a, a brief introduction to um, nucleosides versus nucleotides. One other thing I want to mention is this phosphate group here because there's a very important chemical in your body called ATP also or ADP and a lot of people have heard of that because that's it's really the energy of everything in our body you know when you eat something you think of it as energy your muscles can't use like you know carbohydrates but they can use ATP so your body has to metabolically convert that into ATP what that is is adenosine triphosphate so that, that's actually a great almost a case example for what I'm trying to illustrate here now adenine, simple A, you recognize as one of our purines, that's just nitrogenous base. Once we add on our ribose sugar, now we have adenosine. And now you know we think of ATP, adenosine triphosphate. And when we move down to here to adenosine triphosphate, it's almost like we're adding on 
uh, a phosphate group, we're adding on three of them, and that's where the triphosphate comes from. So you can kind of think if we had this phosphate group plus two more, you right there have a molecule of ATP. So not only is adenine or nucleotides or nucleosides important just for DNA, it's also important for all sorts of metabolic processes in our bodies, namely uh, ATP, ADP. Thank you.